A mountain climber with a mass of 71 kilograms climbs up an overhanging cliff, reaches a height of 26 meters from the base when he loses his grips, grip and starts falling. He falls for 11 meters when his safety rope starts to break his fall. So yeah, it's better if I don't use that picture right here. Let's draw our own picture. Uh, there's an overhanging cliff and there is our man falling okay and he is falling from a cliff that has a height from the base this is the base the height from the base is 26 meters 26 meters the guy himself is 71 kilograms okay and he has a rope attached to him okay, he's got a rope attached to him and that rope is going to break his fall and he falls 11 meters uh, my uh, picture is not on scale he falls 11 meters before his rope starts uh, uh, pulling tight to break his fall Okay, um, that's all of the information so far. Let's see, first question, calculate his potential energy relative to the base the moment he loses his grip. So he was at 26 meters when he lost his grip. The moment, at that moment, what was his potential energy? Now, potential energy is mass times gravity times height. At that moment, it, his mass was 71 gravity is 9.8 they tell us here to use G 9.8 and his height was 26 meters okay it gives me 71 times 9.8 times 26 gives me 18,090.8 18,090,8 joules that was his potential energy when he lost his grip next question calculate his kinetic energy after he had fallen 11 meters now he's fallen down for 11 meters and at this point of his fall we know that from the conservation of mechanical energy that the potential energy plus the kinetic energy at this point must be the same as the potential energy plus the kinetic energy in the beginning in the beginning he had a potential energy of 18,090,8 joules but a kinetic energy of nothing because he lost his grip and started falling so he, um, he, st he started falling from rest so plus zero so this is the total mechanical energy and this must therefore equal 18,090,8 now let's see what the right hand side of this equation simplifies to. We have um, the potential energy, mass times gravity times height is 71 times 9.8. What is height? 11. No, be very careful. At this point he's dropped 11. Okay, his new height is now 15, 26 minus 11. Okay, and this is potential energy kinetic energy is a half times mass 71 times velocity squared and that must equal 18,090,8 okay and now solving for V squared is therefore equal to subtracting 18,090.8 with this and then dividing that on the other side I'm rushing through this 18,090.8 minus 70 times 9.8 times 15 is equal to that divided by 0.5 and divided by 71 gives me 215,6 but that's velocity squared and I know you know the drill by now velocity is there for the square root of that 14.68 plus 
minus 14.68 okay but since he's falling downwards and 9.8 was our uh, acceleration in the downwards direction it was positive so downwards is positive we are using that meters per second okay or just indicate direction by saying downwards good that is his velocity when the rope starts exerting a force on him the moment the rope starts tightening okay and the next question asks us calculate the magnitude of the average force exerted by the rope on the climber if the rope stretches 1.65 meters before the climber comes to a stop okay so this downwards velocity he doesn't want to continue with that velocity because then he's going to hit the ground so this is his initial velocity when the rope starts exerting a force I hope you get that okay now his future velocity when the rope starts exerting a force that future velocity we want to be zero in other words we can go and calculate the change in the kinetic energy because we have future velocity and initial velocity change in kinetic energy is the kinetic energy in the future that's a half mass 71 times velocity squared that's future velocity squared minus a half mass times initial velocity squared 14.68 squared okay so that change in kinetic energy is equal to and you'll see it should be uh, 0.5 a negative or actually this first one will just be 0 because of 0 squared so 0 minus 0.5 times 71 times 14.68 squared equal to negative 7650,34 joules okay so that's the change in the kinetic energy and the reason why we want to do this is because we want the force that the rope exerts now this is where our uh, work energy principle comes in because we want force and force is contained in the equation for network done and we know that the network done is equal to the change in kinetic energy and therefore on the right hand side or actually the left hand side I now have that network done is net force times delta x times cos of theta and change in kinetic energy we actually calculated in the previous step okay now the variable we are trying to solve is the net force so we have the, the net force times the displacement now we read that the rope stretches for 1.65 meters so he is falling for another 1.65 meters before the rope um, actually catches him or before he stops okay and during that time this force is being exerted in an upwards direction okay so you can see the force and the displacement is in opposite directions which makes this angle here 180 degrees okay and because we're indicating the angle in this step already our answer will always be positive well supposed to be okay and that equals this step I got up here 650 comma 34 joules and now if we solve the net force we find that the net force is equal to negative 7650 comma 34 divided by 1 comma 65 and divided by negative 1 because cos of 180 will be negative 1 and there you see those negatives uh, cancel up there so that we find our answer okay as seven six five zero point three four 
divided by 1.65. And we get 4,336.57. That is the net force acting on the man. Okay, so that's not what we're asked. We're not asked to find the net force acting on the man. Okay? We know the forces acting on the man is his weight and the rope exerting a force on it. And when we add these two together, okay, so when we add the force that the rope is exerting plus the weight component of the man, in other words, find the net force of it, then we find the answer is 4636.57 but here we must be very very careful because remember the net force is upwards and we've taken downwards as positive simply because we were told that to use G9.8 downwards was positive so the net force the answer should have been negative but because we used cos of 180 Okay, because we indicated the direction here, our direction is not anymore included in our answer. So we need to make this a negative in this step to indicate that this is upwards. Okay, now we want to find T, which means T is equal to negative 4636.57 minus W. Now what is W? W is weight. Weight is simply mass times gravity. Okay, his mass was 71 kilograms, and gravity again we see is positive 9.8. And then what do we get? Negative 463. Uh, well, let's just do it. Use our calculator to do it. That must have a negative value, and then we subtract 71 times 9.8. And we get negative 5332.37. 5332.37 newtons. This is the force acting on the man. And we can see it's negative, so it's upwards. Okay, so that is the force that the rope is exerting. So 5. 332.37 newtons upwards and that's it long question and you have to keep a cool head to get to the right answer but well done if you got it